Good afternoon, everybody, and greetings from Galway in the west of Ireland. Um, my name is Sean Deneen, and I'm really delighted to be uh, participating in the 18th Malvern Diabetic Foot Conference uh, and feel quite honoured to be um, presenting to you on setting up a diabetic foot service in Ireland, the Galway experience. During the course of the next 20 minutes or so, I'm going to uh, wear a number of hats, um, um, that of a consultant endocrinologist um, involved in delivering a diabetic foot service. I'm also going to at times refer to some um, work that I've been involved in uh, from an academic standpoint in my role in, in our university. Um, and also, and importantly, um, um, I'm going to be presenting with a national lead hat. I've been national lead of our diabetes clinical program uh, for about five years now. So um, this is an overview of what I plan on presenting. I'm going to give a clinical perspective to begin with in the traditional manner um, of a, a case. Um, I'm going to then present a, a public health perspective um, on diabetes care in general and diabetic foot care in particular. I'm, I'm then going to talk about um, a very ambitious uh, transformation program that our, the Irish Health Service is going through at the moment that will have huge impact on um, not just diabetic foot care, but diabetes care in general, we hope. Uh, and I'm going to touch on um, undergraduate podiatry uh, education uh, in our School of Podiatry in NUI Galway and postgraduate education and research um, related to uh, a recently um, funded collaborative doctoral award. And I'm going to do all that uh, in about 20 minutes. So um, I believe that, and I tell my trainees that when, you, when we present cases, we should present cases that we are not proud of, uh, where things did not go well, because I feel, I've always felt that there is much more learning from um, somebody like me or indeed anybody uh, presenting a case um, where things did not go well. Uh, and the case that I'm about to present is certainly um, out of that um, drawer. So this is the story of a 44 year old male who was diagnosed with type two diabetes uh, in 2011. He went through our Desmond self-management education program that will be familiar to a lot of you. So he got a very good uh, start uh, on his diabetes journey. He went on metformin monotherapy and achieved target A1C within a few months of diagnosis. And then he fell off the, the radar, uh, both with his GP and with uh, us in the hospital uh, and failed to attend any, any clinic appointments after that. Um, about uh, two and a half or three years later, he left a heavy object fall on his foot, broke his uh, distal phalanx um, and he, of his great toe and he uh, failed to present to hospital because he had no pain, eventually presented when the wound became infected was almost discharged from ED on oral antibiotics, but picked up by one of our diabetes nurses and an outpatient clinic, diabetes clinic appointment was arranged. This is the uh, uh, fracture of his uh, great toe. All of the numbers, this is when I saw him in clinic, all of the numbers on the left bar, the ACR are above target. He's overweight, obese, hypertensive. His A1C is very high, LDL above target. Uh, he's not taking the drug that we prescribed and he's smoking and drinking to excess. On the right is confirmation of the suspicion that he has peripheral uh, sensory neuropathy. Um, he has impaired monofilament and vibration sensation is absent. He has background diabetic retinopathy. So early microvascular complications in his eyes and in his peripheral nerves. Um, what did we do in a busy uh, diabetes clinic? We reinforced the lifestyle self-management education message that he got originally at diagnosis. We reintroduced the drug that he didn't take in the first place. Um, we referred him to our podiatrist in Merlin Park Podiatry Clinic. We did the retinal photograph that I showed you, uh, and we offered him follow-up at the clinic that he didn't attend in the first place. So uh, the outcome here was bad. He attended once more and then uh, was put on a fixed dose combination at that first clinic, mm -hmm. attended once more and then returned three years later again, having been lost to follow up with a severe diabetic foot infection uh, requiring transmetatarsal amputation. So this was uh, a completely uh, avoidable amputation. 
Um, Frank Vinegar was a public health doctor in America when I was in training. I really, really loved listening to him talk. He was very clear uh, in his take on diabetes. And according to Frank Vinegar, it's straightforward. You either have it or you don't. If you have diabetes, it's either recognized that you have it or it's not. If it's recognized that you have diabetes, you're either getting care for it or you're not. And if you're getting care for diabetes, it's either good care or it's not. So beautifully simple, I hope you agree. And um, the reason that Frank Vinokur takes this approach is because it lends itself to a public health um, approach. He would argue that those of us who deliver care anguish about the quality of the care that we deliver to those who have diabetes, who know they have it and who turn up in our clinics. But actually, if we're not tackling diabetes across these four uh, domains, including prevention, uh, early recognition of the condition and of the complications, and helping people access and utilize the services that we provide, then we're not really um, at the races. And um, this is uh, the work I, I've t I attributed to Graham Lease from Tayside. I really like it. It's similar to the Vinicor model, and it, it highlights how the case that I presented should have been identified earlier um, at risk or, or indeed uh, at the point of, of ulceration prior to an unnecessary amputation. So how do we tackle this? Well, in Ireland, we are doing great work um, and making great strides as, as you are in the other um, nations uh, um, with retina screening. So we are impacting without a doubt on vision loss from diabetes. This is a desktop exercise that I did um, a couple of years ago comparing diabetic retina screen in Ireland, which, is, which maintains a register, has ring fenced funding, is fully staffed, quality assured, has an integrated IT system. Comparing that with diabetic foot screening, we have none of those things in our health system. Um, no formal register, no call recall, no ring fenced funding. Our GPs and practice nurses do get some chronic disease management funding, um, but it's not dedicated to foot screening. Um, and while we have a referral pathway in Ireland up to recently, we've not really had enough community podiatrists to uh, deliver the surveillance after a person screens positive. This is changing. It's changing because of an all party parliamentary group that established and published um, a, a vision for our health service called Sloan to Care. Um, its entire uh, um, program can be abbreviated into two words, shift left, move stuff out of the hospital into the community closer to the patient's home. That combined with the COVID imperative of keeping people out of our busy, uh, overcrowded um, hospital waiting rooms um, has led to um, a transformation program called the Enhanced Community Care Program in our health service, which is currently happening. Um, funding um, through uh, the department and through the HSE to implement models of care for chronic disease, uh, heart failure, COPD, uh, and type 2 diabetes. There are multiple elements to the funding, um, a huge uplift in resources, uh, mainly staffing, uh, modeled on the integrated care program for older persons. This will be an integrated care program for chronic disease. Uh, it will include um, um, a lot of things that are currently only available in the specialist function which lives in the hospital. Um, we know from our own work uh, in the West of Ireland uh, foot study, a relatively small study, but highlighted that two thirds of our patients with diabetes um, screen negative for diabetic foot problems. About 25% are at risk and a small number are at high risk or need active foot disease care. So our model of care is based on the traffic light, nothing earth shattering to this audience, low risk return to general practice, moderate risk foot protection, moderate and high risk foot protection teams. We've created this entity of in remission, uh, like other health services and active foot disease fast track to hospital. The model of care for diabetic foot um, tries to keep things at the lower level of care delivery so self-management and self-awareness of risk is um, um, a part of what we're promoting. At the level of general practice, that's where foot screening should happen, uh, we believe. Um, and then the introduction of what are called ambulatory care hubs. These are not hospital-based and not general practice-based. And this is where we envisage foot protection teams with community podiatrists will be based. And then we try to keep people away as much as possible from the hospital end of the uh, pyramid uh, for ambulatory outpatient 
or indeed uh, inpatient foot care. So the um, ambulatory care hubs, this new entity, uh, will be a clinical site, will house or host the specialist chronic disease teams in the community. Examples of what may happen there, cardiac rehab, pulmonary rehab, diabetes self-managed education, uh, and foot protection. Um, some specialist outpatient services may also be delivered there, particularly for people who do not utilize or access the hospital for a variety uh, of reasons. So a very exciting initiative, uh, funding to the tune of uh, 250 million across all of the um, services over the next uh, 12 to 18 months. Uh, a phased rollout, as I mentioned, over, over a couple of years. Um, um, we are going to go from about nine community podiatrists dedicated to diabetes care in Ireland to about 90. Um, so hugely uh, significant uplift um, will present challenges from a workforce uh, standpoint and from the standpoint of organizing the podiatry profession, which up to now um, has not been uh, well organized in terms of um, a maintaining a register and, and, and having the, the due diligence and CPD and so on that goes with other professions like medicine, nursing and other HSCPs. That is happening. KORU, which is our medical council equivalent for health and social care professionals, is in the process or has just opened a register for podiatrists. And it's a very exciting time to be involved in uh, diabetic foot care uh, in, in our country. So uh, this is an example of the first we, we through, through a slide to care uh, implementation fund project, we were able to um, showcase what a diabetes integrated care community based team looks like. Uh, and, and this is uh, Aoife, Bernie and Rosemary, who are um, respectively a, a community dietitian, clinical nurse specialist and podiatrist working together uh, in June primary care, delivering high quality care to the, um, to the patients in their particular network. So this is very much driven by geography, um, the patient's address rather than the practice address. Um, so there will be challenges. We're aware of that eligibility. Um, for general medical services in Ireland delivered by GPs and practice nurses is based on a means test. The uh, ambulatory care hub will be delivered, care will be delivered by HSE staff. So there will be no uh, eligibility based on, on uh, GMS status. Um, the availability and competency of practice nurses is a concern and we're trying to activate that with um, uh, e-learning modules and education around uh, foot screening. Uh, podiatry workforce, I, I'm going to speak about in a moment um, with our School of Podiatry, uh, hopefully coming to the rescue. And then good communication between the different um, areas will be key to making it all come together and um, helping uh, the patient, of ho helping us avoid the kind of scenarios that I described in the case that I presented. So this is an e-learning module that's still being developed in HSE land, uh, mainly geared towards practice nurses to help them um, get competent in uh, diabetic foot screening. Um, so what about the workforce issue? Um, this is, these are the first two classes that graduated from uh, our School of Podiatric Medicine, as it's now called in NUI Galway, the only school of podiatry on, in, the, in the Republic of Ireland. There is a school in the North. Um, and, and these people, we hope, I hope, uh, will will change change the world change the world in terms of uh, diabetic foot care. Uh, so um, we are close to ten years now um, of graduating in the region of twenty to twenty five uh, podiatrists. We have a custom designed uh, facility in Merlin Park um, um, Hospital in Galway, um, which is uh, which is set up for uh, podiatry students uh, to learn. And um, it is it is uh, a delight to work there. Unfortunately, during COVID, um, we have lost it uh, to initially to a COVID hub and more recently to a vaccine hub. But that hopefully will uh, will return uh, in the near future. Um, personally, I, when I work there, I like to I really like to bring medical students with me um, so that they are in our diabetic foot clinics and work alongside podiatry, uh, undergraduate podiatry students uh, and learn what uh, podiatrists do and the podiatrists get a sense of what uh, the medical students do. And this, this coming together of the different disciplines, this interdisciplinary uh, learning, um, I think is, is really uh, rich 
and, and will in time, I hope, uh, help uh, these young doctors, when, when they are young doctors, um, GPs and so on, uh, have a better understanding of what podiatrists can do. And, and likewise, we'll build bridges um, for the podiatrist to contact um, the, the GPs and, and the junior doctors of the, of the future. So in the, in the remaining uh, part of my talk, I'm, I'm going to describe a very uh, exciting opportunity that we have recently um, um, been able to uh, um, get funded here in Galway, um, diabetic foot disease from prevention to improved patient outcomes or DFD Primo is the title that we've given to this collaborative doctoral award funded by the Irish Health Research Board, which is a really exciting um, program of, of research, uh, including um, uh, six, um, seven, I think, PhD um, students um, doing work um, in different, uh, with different backgrounds, different disciplines, but all in the area of diabetic foot uh, disease. So um, this is the, the faculty um, who, led by my colleague Tim O'Brien in medicine, Georgina Gaithan in nursing, and Caroline McIntosh in podiatric medicine, um, but also including um, faculty uh, and, and colleagues from primary care, from microbiology, uh, from public health, uh, psychology, economics, uh, health promotion, and physics. Um, so the um, um, students, more important than the faculty, perhaps, um, include uh, two podiatrists, um, uh, a psychology graduate, um, a microbiology graduate, two nursing um, graduates uh, who have been working in, in uh, nursing leadership roles for some time, um, and a, a, a student with a, a background in regenerative medicine. Um, and, and these students are working together uh, as, a, as a DFD Primo uh, team, um, but they're also uh, embarking on ambitious uh, programs of work uh, in their own right. So Jennifer, um, whom I'm involved in uh, supervising, is exploring dual um, screening, uh, retinopathy and foot uh, jointly, and will be impacting, we hope, on the area of foot screening uh, as, a, as a scientific um, uh, endeavor. Um, um, we are looking at, uh, Enda is looking at, um, or sorry, John is looking at implementation of the model of care from a nursing standpoint in the community. Uh, Lauren is looking at issues relating to health literacy, both at the level of the patient and at the level of the um, healthcare professional. Um, we have two students looking at biofilm um, and the eradication of biofilm. Uh, in patients with uh, diabetic foot ulcer, diabetic foot infection. Uh, we have um, a student looking at developing uh, cognitive behavioral therapy online approaches uh, uh, in patients with diabetic foot ulcer. Um, and finally, uh, Isha is looking at the treatment of diabetic foot disease using mesenchymal um, stem cell approaches. So, so very exciting, some of it at the, at the cutting edge, but a lot of it not at the cutting edge. Some of it is very much basic, studying how we improve our basic systems of, of organizing and, and delivering care. And in putting this talk together, um, sorry, these are our, our collaborators, uh, international collaborators across the world. In putting this um, talk together, it struck me that the patient that I presented at the beginning, I don't think he ever had foot screening um, formally done. Um, he did not benefit from um, um, much input in the community for his uh, high-risk foot uh, problem. Uh, his health literacy almost certainly um, was, was reduced. Um, and where I think we um, missed out was not recognizing significant psychosocial distress uh, reflected perhaps in his um, use of alcohol uh, and, and other uh, substances. And, you know, this um, psychology input, I think, is probably um, the most uh, uh, important thing for us to learn from that case. So um, in, in terms of the education program, a postgraduate uh, program of, of um, work with experiential learning uh, hardwired into it so that when we do get back to Merlin Park Podiatry Clinic, these students will be working alongside us clinicians, seeing patients with diabetic foot disease and getting an, an understanding 
of the complexity and the challenges that can be involved in delivering care to this group. And for any of you listening um, who might be interested, we're keen to um, compete for uh, an ITN in Diabetic Foot, an innovative training network through Horizon uh, funding. These are This is a screen grab of our, our um, meetings and seminars have gone online and journal clubs have gone online. So I wanted to acknowledge the uh, national uh, clinical program and uh, my colleagues, um, particularly uh, Assumpta Coyle, our podiatry lead, um, and Cleena O'Mahony, our program manager, who have been hugely helpful, along with our GP leads, uh, Suzanne Kelly and Dermot Quindlin, in developing our model of care for diabetic foot. And I wanted to finish with four photographs. Uh, I left Cambridge Attenbrooks Hospital uh, at the end of 2004. This photograph was taken before my hair turned grey and my uh, white coat was taken away from me by infection control. But it's a fantastic photograph and has been a motivation to me for the past uh, 15 years in Ireland. Um, we delivered really high quality diabetic foot care with community and hospital-based podiatrists, with surgeons interested in the diabetic foot, orthotists, cast technicians, nurses, dietitians. Uh, this is our first attempt at a photograph in Galway in 2010. It took us about three or four years to get established. Tuesday afternoons at three o'clock is when we do the inpatient foot round. Uh, 2017, we um, had some students who came to us and that, that uh, was a, a significant moment. People seeking out uh, teaching uh, physiotherapy students, uh, I think, and nursing students in this case. And this is the most recent slide from our Galway University Hospital's uh, diabetic foot round with COVID uh, um, precautions and masks and bare below the elbow, but very proud of our, our um, journey with uh, three physicians interested in diabetic foot disease, two endocrinologists, one infectious diseases uh, consultant, David Gallagher, with um, a surgeon bringing his surgical trainees, uh, two diabetes nurses, a tissue viability nurse, um, a senior podiatrist, and in the future, our collaborative doctoral award trainees from the different disciplines, hopefully learning uh, and, and joining us uh, on the round and in our clinics. So um, I'd like to thank you uh, very much for the honor of presenting uh, at the Malvern conference and I wish you uh, a successful uh, conference this week. Music